tip for the accounts payable clerk, I want to talk about configuring your tab sequences. Now back in the day when I was in accounts payable, it was all like a game and a competition between the other accounts payable clerks in the team to see who could enter the most invoices. And really, you know, it's about being efficient. So I'm here in finance and operations and what I'm going to show you is how to configure the tab sequence in the vendor invoices page. You can apply these same principles to any page. So I'm going to start out by clicking on vendor invoice entry, the workspace, and then from here I'm going to go ahead and click on new vendor invoice. This will take me right into the vendor invoices screen where I can start to create my own uh, vendor invoice. Now when we talk about tab sequences, this is what happens when you press tab on your keyboard. So if my cursor is in the invoice account field, I can start tabbing and you can see that now my cursor is in the number field and then invoice description and so on. If there are certain fields that I don't use or I don't update and I want to skip those fields when I'm tabbing, so for example, after I go to due date, let's say I want to skip all the way down to the invoice lines, for example, you might have noticed that I had to hit tab quite a few times to get my cursor even down in this grid and to skip over these additional fields. So. <clears throat> To personalize your tab sequence, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the options. So uh, based on my screen resolution, it's a little bit hidden underneath the more button or the ellipsis or dot dot dot, whatever you want to call it. I'll click options and then select personalize this page. This will open up that personalization toolbar and what I want to do is select the skip option. And once that skip option is selected, you can start clicking on the fields that you want to skip in your tab sequence. So I don't want to click on the on hold, I don't want to click on match, and I don't want to have to tab over the header budget check results. Once you're done selecting the fields that you no longer want to tab over, you can simply close the toolbar. Now, as I'm going to put my cursor in the due date field, when I press tab, I might need to actually uh, close the form and refresh it so that this will work correctly. I'll put my cursor over here. Now when I press tab, you'll notice that my cursor did not go to the on hold field. Instead, it went down to the invoice line button. So now I'm ready to go ahead and start entering those lines. Now I would need to enter an invoice account and put the other mandatory information up in the header. That gives me the ability to skip different fields in my tab sequence and make my experience as I'm pressing tab customized to my preferences. For my second tip, I strongly suggest using the vendor invoice page to post all of your invoices. I like this because it allows you to use a single page instead of switching back and forth between the pending vendor invoices page and vendor invoice journals. It allows you to be more efficient by staying in the same page and using the same process to enter all of your invoices. So I'm going to start out by clicking on the vendor invoice entry workspace, and then I'll go ahead and click on new vendor invoice. So from the new vendor invoice page, we have the ability to create invoices that are both for purchase orders and for non-purchase order related expenses like rent, utilities, legal fees, and so on. So once the vendor invoice page opens up, I'll need to select an invoice account. So I'll use the drop down box and then choose a vendor from the list. For this example, I'll choose Aid Supply Company. Then I'm going to tab over to the number field and enter in an invoice number, and I'll enter in an invoice date of today. Next, I'm going to go down to the lines of the order. Now normally when you're posting a vendor invoice, you would select a purchase order here at the top, or you might even select a purchase agreement. For this example, I'm going to simply just add lines without selecting any purchase orders. Now, instead of selecting an item number, I'm going to choose a procurement category. So here, I'll go ahead and select rent, 
and then click OK. You also have the ability to type directly into the procurement category field. Next, I'm going to enter a quantity of one in each and put in the amount from my invoice. When you're ready, you can go ahead and post, but you might need to break down your voucher a little bit further. For my example, I'm going to click down to the financial dimensions and select a template. In this case, I've created a template for rent and utility costs. And if I want to view that breakdown or update it, I can click on financials and then select distribute amounts. Here you can see the voucher has been broken down and you can see that it's automatically selected the correct main account for rent expense and broken it down to the various different business units and departments. If I need to make changes or updates to this, I can simply update those percentages, amounts, or I can even split and add additional lines. When you're done, you can close down the window and then you're ready to go ahead and post the invoice by clicking the post button. If you have a workflow, you might need to click on the workflow or submit to workflow button in order to run the invoice through your organization's approval process. What I want to do next is switch over to um, another browser to, and show you how you can set up your own procurement categories and link them to the correct uh, posts. I am logged in here as a system administrator and what I'm going to do is navigate into the procurement category hierarchy. So I'll go ahead and start typing in the search bar and then I'll select procurement categories. This will open up a new page where you can see that hierarchy that I saw in the previous uh, example. If you want to edit the category hierarchy, you'll need to click Edit Category Hierarchy, which will take you into the Category Hierarchy page, which is found in the Product Information Management module. Now I can go ahead and click on New Category node. And for my example, I'm going to make a new category called Legal Fees. You can add additional information such as keywords, descriptions, and so on, but for this example, I'm just going to keep it simple. We're going to close this down and now I need to map this to a, a main account. So now I'm going to go into the posting page, which can be found either in the inventory management or the cost management module. It doesn't matter which one you navigate through. Then I'll click to the purchase order tab and then select the purchase expenditure for expense. This is the posting type that is used when you're creating a vendor invoice that is not linked to an inventory item. So here I'll click the new button and for the item code, I'm going to select category. Then in the category relation drop-down box, I'm going to select the legal fees category that I just created and click okay. Next, I can click in the main account drop-down box and search for my legal fees ledger account. So I'll go ahead and select that here. And now I have mapped legal fees to the correct main account. You'll notice the other categories that we saw in that hierarchy are mapped to the various main accounts. The financial dimensions will always come from the individual invoices and you can use those financial dimension default templates, which we'll talk a little bit more in one of the later tips. For my third tip, I strongly encourage you to set up financial dimension default templates to make the process of breaking down a voucher to a variety of different financial dimension combinations easier. Unfortunately, the financial dimension default template page is not available to the out of the box account payable clerk's role. So I am logged in here as a system administrator. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the financial dimension default template page. And I'll show you how you can see which security rules do have access to this page. I'll start by clicking options and then select security diagnostics. This feature is available on all pages throughout the system. So if you're curious about what security has access to a particular page, you can use this feature to see that information. So here you can see the full list of all the security roles that have access to this particular 
um, role. And then you can also see the duties and privileges that include security access. You can use those duties or privileges to add that access into the accounts payable clerk role out of the box if you so desire. So I'm gonna close that window down and we're gonna go ahead and click on the new icon to create a new financial dimension default template. Keeping on with the example that we looked at in our last tip, I'm gonna create a new template for legal fees. And then I'll tab down and enter in 25% and I'm going to select a business unit. For this first example, I'm choosing business unit one. I'm gonna add another row by clicking add and I'll choose business unit two. I'll add a third row for 25% again. We'll do business unit three. And for my fourth and final row, I'll do 25% with business unit four. Now you'll notice that the total percentage at the bottom is adding up for you automatically as you add those rows. It is important to note that you uh, are not allowed to exceed 100%, uh, but it is allowed to create templates that are less than 100%. So had I only created three rows here, it would allocate 25% of whatever my invoice is to each of the first three rows, and the remaining 25% would not be allocated to any dimensions. It would still use the main account that I selected for that particular procurement category, but now you're ready to start using this. Again, remember that you can access the financial dimension default template from the pending vendor invoice page by going down to the line details and then clicking the financial dimensions tab and then selecting the template ID from the drop down box. Because I like to keep my videos short so that they're easy for you to consume, I've run out of time for today. But as a sneak peek for next week, I have four more tips for accounts payable clerks. We'll be taking a look at how to put invoices on hold, how to add financial dimensions to your grid, some keyboard shortcuts that are critical for the AP clerk, and I'll also show you more details on how to use and customize the vendor invoice entity entry workspace. So be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. And if there's more tips you want to see or tips that you want to share, be sure to comment below. We'll see you next time on Dynamics 365 Unboxed.